I think we are ready to get started. Um, I am Councilman Eric Castello from the 11th District, Chair of the Biennial Audit Oversight Commission. Uh, we are joined by other members of the Commission, Adam Comptor, Joan Pratt, Councilman John Henry from the 4th District, uh, Director of Finance, uh, Henry Raymond, and Inspector General for the City, Isabel Hunt. Um, we are also joined by City Auditor Josh Ash, and we have Marguerite Curran, who is staff to the and two other agencies, I believe. Uh, we are going to start with approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. The minutes should have been disseminated by Mark Reed uh, yesterday at 10 46 a.m. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing that there's no discussion, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the December 18th, 2019 meeting? This is Henry Raymond, so moved. Motion by Director Raymond. Is that a second by Comptroller Pratt? Okay, Costello is a yes. Pratt? Pratt is a yes. Uh, Henry? Yeah, Councilman Henry. Other Henry. You're on mute, sir. I, that's weird. I thought I took it off. Um, Marguerite, are we automatically being be muted if we're not the one speaking yes you are because ah, the okay. uh, sorry about the, that that's okay yes. <laughs> uh councilman henry you're both on the minutes yes director raymond yes inspector general coming yes yes okay those are five yeses uh Absent today are Council President Brandon Scott, Councilman Leon Pinkett from the 7th District. Uh, next order of business we had, before we go to the City Auditor, we had um, some discussions still to be had about Department of General Services and about the Mayor's Office of Emergency Management. I do not believe we have anyone from OEM on this call, is that correct? Okay, I believe that's correct. All right, so we will go. Um, DGS to Tucci. Um, Josh, do, do you want to start off and just give an overview of, of what the findings were for the audit? And then we can ask DGS any questions. And feel free to go to a, uh, take over the presentation mode if you'd like. Okay. Uh, Margaret, can you make me a presenter, please? Completed. Okay. Let's do. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Commissioner Chair and Honorable Commission members. My name is Josh Pash. I'm the City Auditor, and I am presenting to the Biennial Audits Oversight Commission the briefing of the 2019 audits. And um, per Mr. Costello's direction, I will stop after uh, DGS, and then we can pick back up the three audits that we, the four audits that we completed in 2019 Group A that were not issued at the last meeting, Department of Housing and Community uh, Development and Financial, Baltimore City Fire Financial, and Department of General Services Fire and Performance. So the way that I structured this is I summarized it by finding and then by agency. So that's how I'll present it. And if you'd like me to go back into more detail, um, I can do that. So for the summary of the findings, we for the financial audits, we had under the category of revenue, the fire department had revenues that were understated. And we found that there was 19 million and 19.8 million that was originally recorded as emergency medical service revenue under other grants, and that amount was transferred to general fund and recorded as reduction in emergency medical service expenditures in fiscal year 2018 and 2017, respectively. And what we found was is that they were um, the city budgets for credits against expenditures and books those as reductions of expenditures instead of booking them as revenues in certain circumstances. 
And this understatement of $19 million was significant to the fire department's financial statements. We also found that the fire department was unable to provide documentation for both fiscal years 2017 and 2018 for certain revenue activities, and we're not able to validate that. For DGS on the financial side, we noticed that certain noted that certain revenues were incorrectly recorded in an expenditure account. Uh, this was similar to the previous, where revenues instead of being recorded as revenue, they were um, recorded as reduction of expenditures. And we noted that certain agencies that DGS provides services to are designated as internal service fund customers for the agency, and DGS correctly bills and records revenue for services provided to these agencies, but for agencies that are not designated as internal service fund customers, they are budgeted through the general fund for their services provided by DGS. And for those, the expenditures are transferred to the general fund and they're recorded as, um, re as a reduction of expenditures for DGS. For DHCD, we noted that the revenues were incorrectly credited to the Baltimore Development Corporation grant revenue account. And what we found was that there was a BBMR level adjustment journal entry that transferred the funds from, um, or that credited the funds to Baltimore Development Corporation. And when we looked into it, we found that the city's way of identifying revenues um, is based on cash receipts a lot of the time. And sometimes when the cash is received, the identifier of where that's supposed to be credited to as revenue is not always easily identifiable. And that leads to errors in recording those revenues into the right fund. And that was a case where DHCD revenues were put under the Baltimore Development Corporation. Have any questions on that? Okay. Um, continuing on the financial audits for payroll for the fire department, we noted a material weakness over payroll timekeeping function. This was a citywide finding in the 2018 um, CAFR, and we, at that time, we noted that that. The city doesn't have a system that ensures proper approval and storage of timekeeping information among different departments. Uh, we noted that a large portion of our sample because of the impact of the city was in the fire department and that um, this finding specifically and in addition to other city agencies and departments is um, was found in the fire department. And we noted that the capability to maintain timekeeping records for compliance of um, certain union agreements was not available and not retained. For DGS, supporting documentation was missing for select payroll activities. And we found that between the agency's facility management and fleet management divisions, that they were not able to provide documentation for select payroll activities that we sampled for both fiscal years 2018 and 2017. And so we weren't able to validate that those were properly um, captured, classified, and um, recorded. And we noted that DGS has a number of systems and ways to um, track payroll that some of their divisions use biometric, um, some of their divisions have uh, signed timesheets, and we also noted that there are some that are more informal and are tracked on an Excel spreadsheet. And among the um, internal control issues we found there was lack of surrogation of duties and lack of audit trail to identify when um, entries and approvals were made that who, to trace that back to that the person approving the leave and the comp time was authorized to approve it because there wasn't a a formalized and identifiable and traceable tracking to the approvals there. For DHCD, um, documentation including employee sign-offs and management approvals were not always available to support the selected payroll transactions for audit staff. So when we went to dive into the supporting documentation, we basically could not find for our sample selection, um, not 100%, but for, for a significant part of our sample selection, that the employee sign-offs and the approvals 
were recorded and maintained to validate those payrolls. We looked at implementation of prior audit recommendations um, for fire department. They didn't have any prior audit findings for DGS. We had one finding that was prior finding that was implemented. We had one that was not implemented, and we had two that were rolled forward to future audits, and they were rolled forward to future audits because DGS was in the process of implementing them and um, getting them implemented. For DHCD, we had one finding that was partially implemented and one finding that was not implemented and two findings that were rolled forward to future audits. For the, um, would you like me to stop there? Or should I go to the performance audits, which is DGS? Uh, Mr. Chair, I know I have questions at this point. Do you want me to hold them until the end of the full presentation? Uh, no, go ahead, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. J Josh, uh, if you could go back to the last screen, um, can you talk a little bit about the two recommendations that were not implemented for DGS and for DHCD? Yes, hold on a second. And I'm assuming that since you separately described them from roll forward to future audits, that that means there was a direct response from the agency that they were not going to implement them for some reason. Um, the roll forward, so not implemented meant that when we looked, there wasn't, um, they didn't, they didn't fix it yet and they were not in the plans of doing so. Gotcha. Um, the roll forward was we saw that there was evidence that they were implementing it, um, but it hadn't been fully implemented or it was so recently implemented that there wasn't enough information for us to test and validate. Okay, for, um, for DHCD, the finding that was not implemented was the agency was not able to provide documentation for selected 2016 and 2015 payroll timesheets for testing. And we recommended that they um, provide training and provide formalized um, processes and procedures. And the, um, we noted that they had developed a standard operating procedure and they were in the, um, final stages of designing that, but they had not implemented it. And then when we looked deeper, we found that the, um, the formalized written approved and data policy procedures were not robust enough and that they need to be, um, that they need to be more robust. And that was in your, that was in your audit and did they respond to that? We did not. So typically we don't ask for um, formalized responses. Okay. We, um, they did agree to um, formalize those processes and procedures and to retain payroll documentation. Okay. And what was the DGS one? The DGS is... Um, the review of logical access controls over the FASTER system. The FASTER is the management system over um, the city's fleet. So that's how they manage the, the fleet. And the um, system analyst, which is like the super user who gives access, had, um, access to perform daily day-to-day -day activities. And the no monitoring report to see what the, the systems analyst or the super user was doing. A typical control structure is that if you have someone with the highest level of IT access, the super user, then those people are basically for backend um, system maintenance, fixing issues, giving access, but not there for day to day day to day operations, um, such as you know marking um, vehicle maintenance is complete. And in this case, we found that the system analyst was providing um, operational activities and had the full access. And so we went into the system and we looked at the, um, the access of the systems analyst 
and the person will have full um, master, full complete um, access. And um, that was the, just an in as an internal control um, concern. And the recommendation there was either to take their access, so they couldn't do operational duties, or to have them um, an audit log generated by the system on a regular basis that's sent to management to review the activities or the system activities of that person to make sure that they are proper and they're doing the right stuff. And they didn't do either one of those things. So, right. The person still had full access and was still responsible for doing um, system level changes, like back end changes, such as setting up people, and was still in doing operational items. Uh, and the, when we tested it, it, we basically went right in the system and we looked, and the system didn't change when we did the test. Um, I may I speak to that, Councilman Henry. Okay, I'm, so yeah, it's like technically the Councilman Costello is still directing. So, if T.T. Of course, go ahead. The chair is fine. Yeah. Apologies for that. Um, so yes, the individual who served as served and serves as system administrator is still in that role, and there's no one, I guess, higher than her in that hierarchy who would. There's no next logical person that would approve changes that she makes um, in the system. She is the super user. Um, she is also the the deputy division chief for administration. And so excising her um, uh, completely from all operational decisions and and activities is is not an option. And so that's why the fallback had been um, creating that report to be submitted to management just so that there's a second set of eyes of this is what I did. This is why I did it. Um, and 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 so not taking away her ability to do it, but just having a second set of eyes on it. Um, as with a lot of our reporting, and, and this is, it feels like a lifetime ago, um, talking about ransomware, but um, a lot of our reporting structures that had been created were affected by the um, reporting server on which, uh, through which Faster ran. So I believe that was part of the delay in once it was pointed out in the audit that we still hadn't met that requirement. There were um, delays in that reporting along with another one of, um, of the auditor's findings um, uh, about fuel, fuel reporting that, that we were supposed to have been doing to agencies that too got tied up in that. But we do acknowledge and, and have been putting into place the, the, that second set of eyes for someone else to see what system admin changes Ms. Johnson has made. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Chair, I had one other question from earlier in the presentation. Uh, Josh, a couple screens back, uh, one book before that. Uh, yes, no, wait. So is, I think that, no, I think that was, I think that was it, it was, it, it, ah, here you he go. Rev, oh, I got, okay, I see now. I was, I was mixing what I was reading on the screen with what you were saying. It sounded like I, I, I commingled it into a, um, the fire department emergency service revenues were being credited to a BDC grant revenue account, which made no sense at all. And now I, I see what it is. Okay. So, nope, that's it. That's all the questions I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Josh, back to you. And we've also been joined by Council President Brandon Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Josh, you're on mute. You're good now. Okay. Okay. Um, so the performance measures targets 
were um, service 189 average miles per gallon of fuel consumed per vehicle and service 731 percentage of work orders closed on time and 734 percentage of projects that with change orders that exceeded construction contingency. According to our fiscal years 2017, 18, 19, and 20 budget books, um, DGS did not meet the targets of these selected performance measures, and the selected performance measure of service 189 is no longer used. As a result, we didn't validate the accuracy of those actual results presented in the budget book. We did look at the internal controls for the processes selected, and based on that limited scope, we identified certain control design weaknesses for 731. And um, one percentage of work orders close on time, formal policies and procedures for processing corrective maintenance work orders needed to be developed and implemented. And we found for that DGS does have processes and practices. However, the processes and practices are not formally established through guidelines such as policies and procedures. And the risk there is employee turnover and consistency of um, operations. For routing work orders, we noted that there's no formal list of responsible personnel to whom the dispatcher would route work order requests. And when we um, looked into how the dispatcher routed work order requests, it was based on their knowledge of which managers and which coordinators and which supervisors had the expertise to do that. And um, this is a succession planning risk because even though that operations are working well now, um, any turnover or long-term vacation by the dispatcher would cause or could cause a um, significant inefficiencies in routing the stuff since there's people are not identified as who can handle what. It's just based on the expert knowledge of the dispatcher. For closing and completion of work orders, we noticed that there's no established guidelines for maintaining documentation for completed work orders or for recording the work order completion date. Um, therefore, documentation supporting the repair performed was not always maintained and completion dates were not recorded consistently when the work was completed. For tracking work orders, we noticed that there's no established guidelines for measuring the timeliness of work order assigned or completed. And the facilities management division specifically had not established standards for measuring how long it should take to assign a work order and to complete a work order based on the problem type. And basically everyone was being, the amount of time to complete a work order, everyone was kind of judged and treated equally versus on the complexity of the work order. For monitoring of work orders, there was no established guidelines and for supervisors and management to periodically review outstanding work orders and to manage workload and identify backlogs recurring issues. And that was just a, we noted that there were a lot of, um, there were old um, outstanding work orders and that there was no process to clean those out and to manage those. For service um, 731 percentage of preventative maintenance out of total work orders. So while we're reviewing the supporting documentation for this performance measure, we noted that the majority of completed work orders appeared to be for corrective maintenance. The actual result for the work order closed for both preventative and corrective maintenance was reported at 66% for 2018. However, the same year, 72% was reported for another performance measure that measures efficiency of preventative maintenance. And this is because there was not a um, DGS had not consistently used the Archibus functionality to segregate work orders by either preventative or corrective maintenance when updating work order details, and they were mixed together. For service 731, timeless, timeliness metrics, this third finding is related to the target setting of the, of the selected performance measure of the service 731. The dates used to calculate the targets do not necessarily represent the actual completion date of the work order. This is because 
when a supervisor enters in the finish date, which is entered in manually on the work order, the Archibus date that is identified, um, that is used to calculate it, is based on the closing completed timestamp. And we found that the date that the supervisor enters in the finish date and the time date stamp by the system, there is sometimes a gap. Um, there's general, there's, there's quite often a gap and that this can skew the results. It actually um, has them look worse than they are. And um, that was the concern of correctly, um, that of skewing the um, target calculation and to make it look worse than it is. For the DGS performance audit, we um, reviewed prior audit findings. Um, four were implemented and one was partially implemented. And that is um, completes um, my presentation on the 2019 um, biennial. Would you like me to move on to the 2020 Group B biennial audits? One second, colleagues, any questions on this before we move on? All right, take it away, Josh. Okay. For calendar year 2020 Group B biennial audits, um, we have eight that were selected. Um, Department of Law and Department of Human Resources have not been started, and Department of Health and Mayor's also employee development have not been started. Um, Department of Transportation has been started, and the estimated completion times for financials September 2nd and for performance is August 5th. The Police Department the estimated completion time for financials August 12th, and the performance was issued on June 11th. Department of Rec and Parks was, um, the estimated completion time is September 16th for financial and August 19th for 2020. And for planning department financial, the estimated completion date is September 9th, um, 2020. We are in the process of staffing and scheduling the other audits so that they will be completed by the end of the year. And then um, I noted on the agenda, we wanted to talk about the scope of the Group B audits. Would you like to do that now or later? This is the part of the show I'm here for, very much so. Okay. Can you see the... Um, switch this over. Can you see it? Okay. Okay. So um, for the Department of Labor, we selected service 862, and the performance measure was number of public information requests answered on time for, sorry, Department of Law. Um, 869 Minority and Women's Business Opportunity Office was application and short view turnaround time in days, and 869 Minority and Business Opportunity Office, Application Review, Process, Turnaround, Time, and Days. For DHR, Service Center 772, Civil Service Management, percent of classifications and comp compensation project requests completed within deadline, and average number of working days to fill civil service vacancies, and for 773, City of Baltimore University is number of training participants. For DOT, 683 street management, cost per lane miles resurfaced by internal crews, and percent of potholes repaired within 48 hours of reporting, and 693 parking enforcement, number of citations issued. Josh, can I jump in there? Yes. On, on number three, um, and, you know, we can, we can continue to work this out in, in future years. I, I had the same discussion with uh, the Mayor's Office of Government Relations, and Department of Finance, this this citation for parking enforcement, this, this is again an example of my estimation to be a very 
unuseful or useless rather performance measure. And again, I'm not directing that at you. Um, this is this is more so for Director uh, Raymond. Um, you know, when, when I think about whether or not we're effective, it's not the volume of what we're doing, it's the quality, right? So we, we talked about the performance measure for the 311 call center, I deal with the total number of calls you take. Who cares? That's their job is to take calls. I'm, I'm interested in, are they doing something effective with that? Are they, are, how quickly are they closing out calls? For parking enforcement, I'd like to know, you know how quickly is a citation being issued after it, uh, a service request comes in? Or what percentage of our parking citations that are issued are abated because they're in fact erroneous citations? And I would just you know, I, I plan to, to move forward a little more aggressively on this next calendar year. And, and I just want to remind everyone about that because I have been talking about this for a couple of years. I know that the council president, uh, Mr. President, you've been involved in those conversations with me in budget hearings over the years. And I'm just hoping, you know, it's something we can, we can chip away at because we need to do a better job of measuring the effectiveness of agencies and, instead of just looking at it. That is a basic functionality of our job. So I'm, I'm off my soapbox. Back to you, Josh. Councilman Henry. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I, if, if, if you're if you're done with your soapbox, I'd like to borrow it for a second because I think you're you're completely right. Um, number of citations issued uh, is 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 not nearly as helpful uh, in terms of the council uh, having oversight of parking enforcement. Um, as knowing, for example, that some significant percentage of the citations we issued were subsequently fought in court and turned out not to be sustained. Um, that, that, to me, says that um, we have to have a conversation um, more so than knowing that they issued 100,000 versus 90,000. What I, what I also wanted to ask, Mr. Chair, is if we wanted to make suggestions along these lines of these individual agencies, should we be making them as he covers each agency or do you want to wait till the end? I mean, we can wait until the end. I think on the audits uh, in which uh, they've already had an entrance conference and they, they may already be well underway. Um, I, I don't want to come back and ask them to change their scope in, in July, in month seven out of 12. Um, but what I do want to make sure that we do is, you know, let's come back in November and take a much deeper dive into what's being proposed for for next calendar year. And I, I think that's on all of us on the commission. Uh, that's that's not a shot at, at Josh and it's not a shot at, at Henry. But I think, you know, there, there's there are some performance measures that make sense that we want the auditor looking at. And there's other stuff that is just volume, which is a, a waste of, of his team's time. So the, the reason I ask that is that there was a particular performance measure um, that I wanted to ask about with transportation. And if it if it's too late to be done this time, then it's it's too late. But this had come up at previous council hearings specifically about snow and ice management um, that uh, when when DOT has been asked in the past about um, specific routes for, uh, for, for plowing, what they have told the council is that inside areas that they've subdivided the city into a number of areas and that inside each area, they literally leave it to the individual drivers to work out their own route for how to most quickly and efficiently plow that area. And they've said that this allows them to more easily contract out when you have a really bad snowstorm and the city has to use contractual plows as well as using its own in-house equipment. Um, that to me always seemed uh, curious. Um, and it, it, it did not seem to make sense that it was more effective to let individual drivers figure it out 
than it would be to simply develop an Optimax route for each area and give that route to whoever was driving. And that was a question I was hoping that audits could take up when it next did a performance audit of, uh, of DOT. And so if it's possible to consider that in this audit, I'd appreciate it. If not, then you know I'd like it to be just put on the record for the next one. Okay, um, so we are um, deep into this audit, and um, I want to kind of bring up a couple of things. So um, to address your question, Mr. Henry, um, we we can schedule specific, um, you know, audits of high or risk, risky processes and to gain efficiencies of the city and to identify those. And we can have discussions about um, scheduling that in there and to address that and to address the, the number of citations issued. So we noticed when selecting performance measures to audit that there are a lot of them that are measuring output and in order for us to add more value in the audits what we've done is we've looked at more internal and underlying processes and procedures and controls for those processes to even though maybe the metric might not be the most useful to certain users or it might be an older metric, um, we're looking at the underlying processes behind that and controls to identify areas of improvement, which the, um, the agency can get more value out of. Okay. Uh, I'm understood. Okay, um, going on to police department, um, service 627 emergency communications, we um looking at percent of priority one calls for services dispatched to officers in less than 60 seconds um and we looked at 634 crowd and traffic and special events management percent of cost reimbursed by event organizers which epd bills and then 635 was looking at recruitment and training percent of recruits who successfully completed training with a grade of 85 or higher or Rec and parks, we looked at six, we're looking at 645 aquatics, percent of poles meeting maintenance standards, 646 park maintenance, number of playgrounds with 100% functional components, and 640, 654 urban forestry, number, percent of tree maintenance service requests received. The- Josh, um, Josh how far in are you on rec and parks? We are at the reporting stage, so 85%. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it looks like Director Moore already took care of the percent of pools meeting, meeting maintenance standards, but that's all right. It's always good to have a second set of eyes on it. So one of the um one of the choices we actually changed to this one because the originally when we presented our um, proposed performance metrics was a um, number of trees planted, and certain commission members had asked about. Um, stump removal and I believe like fallen limb removal. And in order to broaden the scope and to capture all of that, we looked at service requests that would cover both the, um, the stump removal and the planting of trees and um, the limb removal. Got it. Department of Planning, we looked at 76, we're looking, we're, um, we have. Plan 761, development, oversight, and project support. Average number of site plan review committee meetings required for a plan approval. 763, comprehensive planning and resource management. Average number of days for a basic permit review. And 765, planning for a sustainable Baltimore. Percent of climate action plan recommendations completed. For health, 718, chronic disease prevention, looking at percent of tobacco outlets checked for compliance with Baltimore City laws. 315, emergency services health, percent of animal bite reports, which rabies investigation has started within 24 hours. And 717, environmental inspection services, percent of mandated food service facility inspections completed. 
or MOED 796 Workforce Services of Ex Offenders, number of ex offenders who received at least one service and obtained employment. 797 Workforce Services for Out of School Youth Opportunity, percent of youth opportunity participants who avoid being coming involved in the juvenile or adult criminal justice system while enrolled, and 800 Workforce Service for WIOA Fund Youth percent of enrolled youth who earn an occupational or educational credit by the end of the program. And that is our Group B uh, selected performance measures. Colleagues, any questions? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, to, to, I, I, was, I was looking to see what other ones I had already on. Oh, um, I'm, I'm trying to tell if this is the same issue. Service 648. Josh, can you go? Actually, first question. Josh, can you send us a copy of this presentation tonight? Yes. Okay. Um, can you scroll back to Rec and Parks? Okay. Um, it it looks I, I, the question I had um, under Rec and Parks and Service Six Forty Eight Community Recreation Centers it is we were we're missing our target for total number of youth age five to thirteen enrolled in after school recreation programs during the school year and. That strikes me as a pretty important one in terms of impact on the community. Is that something that you have time still to look at? So we are in the reporting stage for rec and parks also. Um, I can I can probably um, do some inquiries and some light, um, light review without getting into the whole um nine yards is at this at this time okay um and I, I i'm trying to figure out if there's a a way to ask this more objectively but mr mr chair i i guess i'm trying to figure out when was the right time to suggest these kind of things should because it should it sounds it sounds like we needed to have shared these with Josh back in December of last year to get these onto his list before he started putting together the first half of the audit. So is that yeah, that's something? correct? Yeah, no, no, I think that's correct. It's the end of the year meeting and, and we if I'm not mistaken, I think we did that back in December. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about the proposed performance scope. I will make sure, though, that we do that earlier this year in, in November. That was what I was trying to remember, and um, and so that's I'm I'm gonna ask then. In that case, if we could go back to Josh's list of the ones that haven't started yet. I, I want to focus the remainder of the um, the questions then on so law, DHR, yes. health, and MOED. Um, with with law, um, and it looked like you had touched on this um, in eight sixty two, the in service eight sixty two. Um, I was wondering. How, what what is the cost and length of time it generally takes the law department to provide a response to an MPIA? Is that already part of what you're looking at? Um, hold on one second. So not necessarily the cost, 
but the um the whole process flow of coming in and how they're tracking it how they're managing it and then um marking it closed would be included in the scope of that okay i'm not sure how to, not not the, not the cost i think okay that's that's fine and and then the other one um under health if you could go back to the ones you'd already identified for the health department. Okay. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, thank you. Um, if you, if you have time still to look at service 307, substance use disorder and mental health, um, in FY19, they didn't hit a single performance measure target. And, um, my natural inclination is to assume underfunding, but, uh, I, I thought that might be a worthwhile one for you to check out. So let me um, let me look into if that's related to the scope here, um, and um, if not, maybe we can have a conversation with um, the commission and um, see if they we want to um, put that in because we haven't we haven't started this audit yet. Right. Wait. Wait. wait a, a conversation with the commission. This, this commission, your commission, right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think this is. I think this is now when we would have that, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I would, I would propose that if, uh, if there's still an opportunity for the Department of Audits to add that into the things they look at, um, I, I'd love to know why this service didn't hit a single performance measure target in fiscal nineteen. Um, do, do other members of the commission? Josh, are you, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, this for health, it would not impact us. We, we, we could go either way. Colleagues on the commission, any thoughts? I, I have no concerns. Mr. President. Madam Comptroller. Director Raymond. Inspector no concerns. General. Inspector General coming. I think it's a good idea. Anything that's not meeting any of the requirements, we should look into it. All right. So there's there's the recommendation, Josh. Let's do it. Would, um, would you want to replace one of these three or add it to the three? Um, I, I would be okay with removing the middle one. The other two are just too important in terms of food service inspections and tobacco outlets. If, if you right. felt inclined, is that your recommendation that from a capacity perspective, you need to remove one? That would help us to stay within our timeframes. All right. I agree with the chair that the second one is the least impactful of those three. And I'd much rather know the answer about Substance abuse. All right, we're all on the same page. Okay. Any opposition to that? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Colleagues, any other comments, questions? Okay, in terms of the agenda, uh, we're going to come back in uh, November. Um, Josh, if before November, you could have your team put together recommendations for uh, the agencies, um, as well as a history of, you could just throw it in a spreadsheet. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, but a history of uh, the previous two audit cycles for each of the agencies in group A, that would be greatly appreciated. Can you say that one more time? The previous two audits, history of what? Um, what the performance measures were that were audited in the previous two cycles for each of the upcoming eight agencies. 
Okay. A comparison year year one we did this year three we did this we're going into year five here's what we'd like to recommend for your consideration. Okay. Colleagues, any other questions? All right, Josh, thanks for the great work. Really appreciate it. Chi-Chi, thanks for all the great work at DGS. And we'll see everyone. And Chi-Chi, you do not have to come back and join us again for two years. Yay! Nice I'll miss you all, but thank you. It's like you, you just got out of a doctor. <laughs> they told you you're good. Oh, all right. Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you all very much. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, just uh, really quick before uh, uh, you adjourn. I, I know I, I communicated this to uh, to you, but I did want the other members of the uh, commission to know uh, that uh, there was a miscommunication with the uh, mayor's office of emergency management. So uh, we sincerely apologize that uh, there was not a representative on the call tonight. But if anybody has any follow up questions, please let us know and we will get you any information that you require. But uh, th thank you for your understanding, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Stegman. Appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great uh, evening. Thank you all. Thank you.